Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Chris Lopez here, and welcome to our webinar. Where we're going to talk about the short term rental market or Airbnb market here in Denver Metro. Now, last couple of years, lots of stuff has you know, happened. You know, the last decade, Airbnbs have been the hot thing, great investments. Everyone's used them, everyone's traveling them. Uh, they've become more and more popular. And now we've also had more coming online. We've had COVID. We've had now high interest rates. We're at high prices right now. Uh, we got new regulations coming online. And so, a lot of stuff that you need to know if you're running Airbnbs or if you want to get the Airbnb game. And so I do what I always do. I have these questions myself. I got investors asking. I always want to know what's going on the market. So I am not the expert, but I know who the experts are. And so I get the great privilege of getting these guys from Air Simplicity over here to do a webinar with us to break down what's going on. Now, Air Simplicity is a local property management company uh, based here in Denver. There's a lot of great term great short-term rental stuff. They've been a great resource to me. We've referred many clients that use them as well. I've only heard great things. So without further ado, we have the two co-founders here, Shalom Kaiser and Jonathan Schneider. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good, morning. Or good afternoon now, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us on. So we'll do a voice here. Shalom. Let people know your voice. Yes. Hello. All right. So this is Shalom. <laughs> That's me. Jonathan. Hello. Hello. All right. How's it going? Yeah, I know you guys sound similar there. We'll 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 get you guys worked out here. Yeah, you'll anyway, be able to I'm excited to have you here because we we had you on the podcast before. You know, we we I talk you throughout, you know, the, all the investing cycles, and you guys are plugging the market. You run Air Simplicity, you're Airbnb investors yourself. Give a little background on just kind of so people know why you're an expert. Yeah. Uh, just firstly, thank you for hosting us. We were here a couple of years ago on your podcast, and uh, that was received well by multiple pe many people in the community. So, and we, I think we've even gotten a client or two from that podcast. Fantastic. So we really appreciate that, Chris. Uh, we've been doing this for seven going on eight years now. We manage 70 properties in the Denver metro area, plus broader Colorado. So in the mountains, um, also one in Florida, by the way. And uh, yeah, we've just been building from the ground up. We've learned all the in, in, ins and outs over the years. So shall you've me paid your add? dues, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and of that managed, we own uh, probably about a quarter of those. So we are active investors ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we do some arbitrage deals too, which means that we rent them from owners and then short term rent them. Um, but yeah, management is our bread and butter. Fantastic. All right. So I know as we we're prepping for this, we put together, or you guys put together, I think like six main items to talk about. What are we talking about today, Shalom? Yeah, so we've got some slides going here. Topic of discussion, regulatory climate, uh, what to look for when purchasing an STR, high level outlook, national and local data, deal dive, a bird's eye view of a successful deal, uh, operational finances, so understanding your P&L and what that looks like, trends, what you need to be looking out for, and finally, tips, tricks, and best practices. All right. So like I said, lots of great stuff. And we just take all the questions investors have about short-term rental, ask these guys to jam pack them to one hour. So we're going to blow through this. However, if you guys have questions, feel free to leave comments in the chat if you're here live. If you're not, leave in the comments or reach out to one of us. And we are going to go through a couple of spreadsheets on here. If you would like to grab a copy of those, uh, go to the show notes and you can download them or you can always reach out to one of us. We're happy to email them to you as well. All right, man. So talk about the regulatory climate because I mean, you know, this has been always so fascinating because, you know, real estate is such a slow moving beast, but short term rental is about probably one of the fastest moving components towards real estate. You know, for my fears out here, it went from, you know, wild, wild west in Denver County to now very restrictive rules. Um, and then the other counties are following as well. So yeah, what is going on? Yeah. So, well, the first uh, disclaimer I'll say is that within the regulatory climate, we're just going to be talking about Colorado. Uh, national climate, we're yeah, we don't know too much about, so we're going to keep it local. Um, so the good news is that most of the regulations um, have already been established. Um, so well, let's go let's go through uh, bullet point by bullet point. Is it legal? So that's the first question that we're going to ask anyone when they're looking to invest um, or manage a short-term rental. Is it legal? Are they allowed to do it? Um, the second point is just because it's not legal doesn't mean people aren't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is so true. <laughs> as you'll see, and we've seen, yeah, if you go on Airbnb and you look around, you look at areas where you know they're illegal, you're going to see listings. Now, that's a high risk, high reward situation. Uh, it's it's pretty risky to go invest. You might buy a house for seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000, spend a couple months, 
twenty, thirty thousand dollars buying furniture and setting it up and then get shut down, that's going to prevent many, many, many people from investing. Um, but if you can get away with it, oftentimes there's not a lot of uh, supply and you can charge a high amount and uh, yeah, it would be quite profitable. Yeah. And just to add something there. So some municipalities such as Denver County have gotten very sophisticated in where if you don't have a short, a valid short-term rental license number, they literally take down the listing from the back end. So you can't even list it in Denver without a proper and valid license. You mean number. they take it down on the back end, like through, like through Airbnb? Yeah, Airbnb and Denver are working together. Oh, okay. And so you can't even li list illegally in some places. We can speak for Denver for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised to hear that. Like I was wondering, yeah. like it's not, yeah. You know, all the data is out there publicly mm -hmm. on there. So they've gotten that sophisticated mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Is that the same for Verbo? Are they kind of doing yeah. that as well? It, it is. It okay. is the same with Verbo. But it requires an agreement between Airbnb and the municipality. So Denver and Airbnb jockeyed for a while to finally come to an agreement. I think it took multiple years. Yeah. Um, so. But you'll only see that in the big cities. Yeah. You're not going to see that in Arvada. We Douglas, yeah. Douglas County. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, so the next one, uh, tapering of regulations. So most counties and municipalities have established regulations. So that's nice from an investor perspective. If you are looking to buy a home, most of the places that you're looking have some type of regulations in place already because it could be quite risky to go buy a house. And then a month later, they prohibit it. Um, that would be a bad situation. So there are a couple of counties that are figuring out what to do, like Douglas County, like you mentioned, Lake County. Uh, so oftentimes they'll put a moratorium. They'll just say, hey, for the next 12 months, no, no, no more short-term rentals. We're going to figure out what to do. Um, What's but, Douglas County doing right now or thinking of doing? They're allowing, I think, one. It's pretty pretty open, I think. Your, but I, I don't know. they primary or... Um, I don't think it has to be a primary. Mm -hmm. They haven't they haven't listed anything yet on their website. So this is just from talks that we've so heard through like the it's probably like chatter in the pipeline that in, in you know, the pipeline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I was just curious. And because I know Denver, like, let me ask you about this because like, you know, I th I think it was what four years ago, Denver changed their rules to where hey, you could have any Airbnbs to where it's basically a primary. Mm -hmm. And I right. knew I'm sure you guys knew quite a few investors. They had, they had a dozen Airbnbs going around that were great cash cows, and all of a sudden it was just basically shut off overnight. How important is that like a plan B when running your numbers for like regulatory change like that? Is there any way to like quantify that or like how would you mitigate that that risk or is that risk not a big deal anymore? Um, yeah, I would say it is important. And the way I view it is if it can't operate as a short term rental, you you want to look into midterm rental. So midterm rental is between a short term rental and a long term rental, typically for 30 days. So when there are prohibitions, uh, with, from short uh, on short term rentals, they're 30 day plus. So if you anything, pretty much anyone allows a 30 day plus. So and we'll we'll touch on that a little okay. bit later. And then a long term rental. I mean, if the numbers can work, even as a long term rental, you'd be pretty safe. But I mean, in today's market, that's a little that's, tough. That's tough. That's why people want a short term rental for some cash flow. Yeah, and we can speak from personal experience. One of our units just is getting shut down soon. So we're like, okay, do we? Do a midterm, thirty day plus. You don't you don't need a license at all yeah. for that. Um, or do we sell it? Do we just do long term? So we're in that situation. Have you figured it out yet, or is that in Pro process right now? We're thinking about doing midterm for now, okay. but we're also we're also thinking we're, about selling it too. Yeah, we're thinking about doing a ten thirty one into two mountain short term rentals. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, just with the high rates, it's it's hard. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> we'll get into that. And I know we got some questions here about uh, supply being saturated. We'll cover that in a few minutes. We will. Yeah, yeah. we'll get into that. Um, so within the regulations, some of the regulations criteria may include safety inspections. So the governing body may want to do an inspection just to make sure everything is, is safe and running well. Uh, primary residence. Most people are probably familiar with the Denver primary residence rules. Oftentimes that the term primary residence is vaguely defined. Um, even according to Denver, there's it at the very least, it means you can't have another one. But, you know, you can travel for five years and it can still be your primary residence. So Yeah. And Denver's definition is usual place of return. Right. And I think they define that as 183 days, half a year of actual living in the in the home. But we have people who don't live in it yeah. at all and they're you know they make out okay so yeah. some yeah 
license cap. So this could be an, uh, a certain amount of licenses that are given out, which could be based on density. So I believe it's Gilpin County, for example, that has 4.5% uh, of the total inventory of homes in the county. They'll allow it to be short-term rentals. Mm. Um, and if you if it's full, then there's a wait list or an absolute amount. Um, so just let's say there's 250 uh, available licenses. Uh, hefty fees are lengthy approval processes. So we'll see that, especially in uh, Jefferson County is the one good example that comes up. Uh, for some of our clients, it's taken a couple thousand dollars and a few months to get a license, which is not even guaranteed. And you have to come before a hearing who decides whether the license is granted or not. So. It's a, little wow. it's, a, it's a little risky. Yeah. So after you purchase a property and after you started the process, you may find out if you can short-term rental it? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I would assume that most would get accepted unless they had a good basis on which to reject you. But hey, I'm like it's a, it's a double-edged sword because yeah. it's preventing competitors. So uh, limited amount of nightly occupancy. So a good example here would be Arvada, which only allows for 240 nights of the year to be occupied. Uh, this isn't too common. We don't see too much of that. Limited amount of occupants. So how many people can be in the house during the rentals? Oftentimes, this is more common in the mountain properties, uh, which is often uh, a, a maximum amount of people allowed. Uh, the Like how many um, the septic, how many people the mm. septic uh, system can can hold essentially that's a very um, practical yeah thing. it is um additional taxes so uh, they want their cut the counties and municipalities want their cut uh which could be anywhere from a few percentage points up to like 10 11 percent denver I, last time i checked was 10.75 uh counties versus municipalities so some people might be wondering um how this works because you can you can have municipalities within counties that have their own set of regulations now from what we've experienced if the municipalities have their own rules, then typically the county is going to let that go and let them dictate their own rules. Um, a really good example of this is uh, Wheat Ridge in, in Jefferson County. So Jefferson County allows sh for short-term rentals to have, they have to have at least an acre or more in size, which obviously is, is not applicable to most homes in Wheat Ridge. And Wheat Ridge has their own um, laws and processes. So they don't really interfere. So I would check first the municipal laws and then the county laws, uh, unless it's an unincorporated, in which case you certainly have to look at the county laws. Uh, HOA typically, HOAs are not typically short-term rental friendly in metro areas, but friendly in vacation hotspots. So that's- um, yeah, Like up in the mountains, that's- Yep, exactly. Mountains, uh, beach towns. Orlando. Orlando, mm. yeah. But in Denver metro, if there's an HOA, the chances of them allowing short-term rentals are slim. Yeah. I've only heard of a couple over all the years that yeah, allow. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, active versus passive enforcement. Um, so most, like a place like Denver is, uh, they are actively enforcing it. As John mentioned before, they're out. They have sophisticated software looking for people who are doing this. Um, if you are operating legally, they are going to send you a, a notice and then fine you. Um, if you are operating legally, the best piece of advice that I would give is keep your neighbors happy because that's that's how they find out or through complaints so um, it's a good rule of thumb in any type of real estate investing <laughs> keep neighbors happy yep. yeah oh we, yes we actually give we have letters um templates that we give out to the neighbors of all our short-term rentals that an explanation of who we are uh, here's a discount code here's a starbucks gift card and hey here's our number call us you know if there's a problem call us don't call the county and we'll deal with it uh, yeah, I've actually heard. I mean, I, I, I mean, that's a great idea for my short term rental. Um, I've had a friend that I could fix and flip. They kind of do all that where it's like, hey, I'm going to be proactive. And that way, if there is an issue, whether, hey, a, a, a short term renter occupant or an issue with a dumpster and a flip, like, hey, let you guys, the owner, the operator, the manager get the call first. So it can be taken care of, avoid, you know, other incorrect people getting called and causing a lot more drama. Or, hey, I can call you and get it handled quickly and you're like oh hey thanks for telling me that's really like really good to know that my contractor did that thank you i'll yeah. take care of that this afternoon exactly so I, it's a so smart idea to go out there and be proactive yeah um okay. all right so yeah so we're going to talk now about before uh, we jump yeah, into yeah, the, the national trends sure. I, I got one question for you guys here locally so like where is like because you know we got denver 
uh, metro, five five counties in immediate, and uh, you know, Denver County, Denver City has very restrictive short term rental laws. What's the best place for people to get a handle on what municipality, what county allows what, or um, because I know high level, but again, I know there's always like, oh, you're Douglas County saying this, you know, last year Lakewood was saying this, like there's always chatter and always stuff in the pipeline, or it seems like there's always stuff in the pipeline. Are you asking where should people find information, like, like uh, information, like current information, or yeah, I'm saying someone's going to hey, I'm going to go out there and invest in yeah. an Airbnb, and like, I mean, you know, the going back that slide, like it is, you know, it's 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 uh, many more layers of, of due diligence, and I would say a long term rental or primary residences for that stuff, like. Where do people start or is there, say, know the high level and, and talk to the experts like you guys and, you know, our agents that know this stuff? This this has always been a thorn in my side uh, yeah. for for the both of us, really. And I've spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. So there, there are a couple of resources out there, but what I've found is they're not up to date and they're not even accurate. So I don't use them anymore. I've compiled my own sheet of, uh, I mean, of Your the last few sheet? months. Yeah, of what and then it's going through the websites and often calling the counties and seeing what the yeah. rules are and, and how because it is it's moving. It's a dynamic process. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to help anyone if they want to uh, they want to reach out. But there's not a great resource that I'd recommend. Cool. Yeah, we, we keep stuff internally that we, you know, we're like, oh, should we share with clients? Should we not? We, we generally share. But like, hey, this is the best we know. Always, 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 always go double check with the municipality or county because, yeah. you know. And they the investor responsibility, but here's the best we know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. And yeah. just, cool. just to reiterate it one more time, like we started this presentation with one question, is it legal? It is the most important due diligence question one mm. can ask in this business. And it's like just number one before you, before, before you look at the properties, anything. That so, is a great thing to come back yeah. to from your high level. Very simple. One. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right. Yeah. So national trends data, like uh, I think it was Diana said earlier, um, heard that. She said supply is becoming a bit saturated, market's getting a little soft. Like, you know, I, I've seen some headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, what is going on with the Airbnb market? Some of you may have heard of the term Airbnb bust. Uh, <laughs> that's actually not, that's good yeah, though. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. out there in the headlines. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we want to dive into some of the national data and local data. And um, <clears throat> let me describe this keyboard. Here you go. Cool. The data that we're pulling from is AirDNA. And for those of you who don't know, AirDNA is, I would say, the prominent software um, company in the short-term rental world. And there aren't too many data sources, yeah. so that's what we're pulling from. Yeah, they're the largest Airbnb Verbo d data aggregator for sure. So we're gonna dive into national STR performance metrics. This was released in April 23. And year over year, uh, available listings nationally has gone up to 1.43 million, up 18.9 or just 19% year over year. So there's a much, supply has increased significantly. But at the same time, demand has risen only 12.6%, meaning it's lagging supply. Occupancy, in turn, also is lower. So more peop uh, there's more people booking. The demand has increased, but it's spread out amongst more listings. It's only gone, and occupancy has gone down 5% year over year. ADRs, they're almost the same. What is ADR? Uh, average daily rates. Mm -hmm. So the nightly rate you charge the guest is... 1.4%, which is a pretty flat number. The picture that's being painted right now is that, you know, there's more supply. There's, there is more demand, not as much as supply. And okay. So what does that mean for everyone? So, and, and just a yeah. note on the, mm -hmm. on the increase in ADR of what was it? One point. Yeah. 1.4%. I don't think that's taken in uh, inflation into consideration. So really it's, it's decreasing. Yeah. So, I mean, all this backs up with, I mean, I, I, you know, I always look, I think supply and demand, if I could ever know like one uh, data point would be supply and demand. Mm -hmm. um, and this goes back to classic, hey, supply is increasing faster than demand. So therefore occupancy rates, rents, it all starts softening. Yeah. And that's what, well, that's pointing towards it looks like. Right. Exactly. And just to show you another uh, nice graphic from AirDNA, the blue is supply, orange is demand. And this is broken out into different city city areas, mid-sized cities, rural, large cities, uh, suburban, large cities, urban, the entire United States. In every category, supply has outpaced demand. In some areas, it's outpaced it way more. In small cities, mid-sized cities, such as Denver, supply has significantly uh, outpaced demand by almost 10% or a little bit more than 10%. So the story here is that there's more supply, therefore 
less uh, more supply than demand and there's uh there's some softening in uh the market as we've stated and shalom's going to talk about yeah uh, so here. yeah the other the other big imp important piece of information here is the is the traveler um so as you can see from this graph almost 50 percent of consumers surveyed say that uh, high travel prices have kept them from traveling in the, in the last month and we're seeing that too um anecdotally uh, people are tightening their wallets and mm -hmm. when they are traveling they might not splurge they might not get a place as nice they might get something smaller uh, they're going to be doing more shopping uh, within like within airbnb and also across platform they're going to look they're going to compare airbnb to verbo they may even um try to book direct um and we'll get into that in in a bit um but yeah so it's kind of being hit on on both ends the the host uh, and the guest yeah and to add one more part of this is you know people are the supply has gone up almost 20 percent. a lot of this is from the arbitrage model people will rent a property and then they'll airbnb it with the landlord's approval most of the time that's a lot of the increase of supply as well. Everyone thinks they oh, can. Oh, really? So a lot of it's the yeah. arbitrage. Yeah. Oh, and so they actually break out that they can break out that data. They didn't break that out, but I just just looking at social media and knowing people in the industry, it's happening a lot. Oh, yeah. I never thought that makes sense. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, lead times, this, yeah. lead times don't necessarily play into um, into the supply and demand conversation, but it's important to note the difference. So between 2017 and 2020, pre COVID, the lead time, which is the um from when the guest books the reservation from when they're uh, to when their reservation occurs uh is 39 days in february 2023 that went down to 24 days so people are booking a lot closer to their to their stay to their vacation hmm. okay yeah and just in terms of metrics that's a almost 50 percent reduction in time like that's a huge change yeah um we're managing 70 units so you know we're looking at our calendar right now in august and it's a lot of the houses aren't booked, but we're like, wait a minute, just wait, take a step back. It's okay. Like people are going to book. It's just, it's just, it's just yeah. closer. Weeks longer now, right? Yeah. For, for the or last. Less. So they'll book closer to the date. So, yeah. you know, for so. the last like six to eight months, every month I'd go, I'd call John, Hey, we're, we're screwed. Like, look at, look at <laughs> next month. There's no bookings. And then they'd come in and we'd be okay. Interesting. But it yeah. just takes some more time. Okay. Yeah. So and that was since, since COVID you've seen the lead time decrease. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then also interestingly, cancellation policies have also become more lax. Um, and Airbnb encourages people to, uh, they actually boost listings that have more lax cancellation policies. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, local data. So let's look at Air Simplicity's numbers. So we can just read off the slide here and then pretty self-explanatory. We're projecting a decrease in overall revenues uh, between 14 and 19% um, year over year, 2023 to 2022. Um, that is comprised of both occupancy and ADR. So that's a 9.8% drop in overall occupancy and a 12.9% drop in ADR, an average daily rate. Um, and for those of you looking at the slides, you can see the graph there and you can see this, the seasonality of that as well. So overall, they're saying here local, is that like Denver Metro or Colorado? Col Colorado. Okay, so in Colorado, a 14 to 19% overall drop in just revenue. And that's, well, that's our data from our company. Okay. Um, so we're assuming our actual. Oh, numbers. sorry, you're simplistic. Okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah. I I, mm -hmm. I just saw air and I okay, perfect. Yeah. That that's really good. Okay. Yeah. So those are real numbers. That those are the properties we're actually managing. It's not from some aggregator. This is yeah. actually real. Oh, this is the best data then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you'll notice that that light green line. Um, if you look at the chart there, it says 390 in uh, for, probably in March 2022 is the is the light line, the lighter green and the darker blue is this year. So you see a, that's where we got that 12.9 reduction in eight in average daily rate. Um, this year at the same time, it's, it's, we're not getting as much money per night okay. now as we did last year. Um, so and that's, so you saw an average like 390 down to 340. Yeah. Okay. Which is a 13% drop. Um, yeah. So if we could open up that spreadsheet, so, uh, that'd be so awesome. Now, now that yeah. we've talked about all the doom and gloom, let's yeah. look into a deal that Works. Is it, uh, <laughs> well, this actually. It's um, uh, this one. This yeah, one's this good. One, this yeah. is, we're actually still in doom and gloom. Actually. Okay. All right. That's okay. Let's stay there a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in on here. So yeah. yep. give us a second, everyone listening and watching. We're switching over to. We got two spreadsheets to go through because mm -hmm. this is uh, this is the best stuff in the world. Let's talk about what's actually going on. So yeah. we will talk through this. 
Uh, you guys know if you're listening, watch the YouTube video or uh, just come to the uh, notes and you can download these spreadsheets. Yeah. So in this uh, sl or spreadsheet, you're going to see two profit and loss statements side by side. The one on the left is a P&L for May 1st, 21 to May 1st, 22. The one on the right is May 1st, 22 to May 1st, 23. This is the exact same property. We have a lot of data on this property, but we've been managing it for, for a while. It's a desirable uh, oh. three bedroom, two bath home in Jefferson Park, and Denver. I just want to interrupt and yeah. say that this PL is exactly what our PLs look like, like mm -hmm. what we give to ourselves and our clients. So it's the same yeah. breakdown. I like this. Yeah, this is what our clients see. This is what we see every month when we look at our properties uh, information. And on the left hand, the two years ago data, uh, you'll see rental income and cancellation fees. This, this uh, encompasses all the income that came in minus uh, cleaning fees, not including cleaning fees. We had a total of $87,000 in income, uh, about starting a year and a half or not a year and a half ago, but tw May 21 to May 22, same time frame. a year later, we went down to 71,000. So that's a minus 18%, it's, a, it's an 18% decrease in income just without cleaning fees. And if you scroll all the way down, uh, to the bottom, our net income for this property after everything, this person made $66,000. That's how much money we sent them two years ago. And then this past year, we sent them $51,000, meaning we collected all this money after paying all the expenses. This person made 23.5% less in net income on a really cool house in Denver, well-furnished, well-reviewed, well-managed. It still had a pretty significant drop. Just painting the picture that there is a, tamp a dampening of demand, maybe oversupply, maybe macroeconomic issues uh, affecting um, affecting properties. So to jump back to the slide deck. Actually, a question oh, yeah. here. So you said this is, you know, uh, Jefferson Park, uh, good property. This is like, mm -hmm. this is like a, a prime property for mm -hmm. Airbnb, not like a the lower 10% of the portfolio. But it's this, a, is, a, like, this is nice. Okay. Top 20%, top maybe top it top 20 top, top, it's not it's not, not luxury i mean the great location but it's, no but this it's is like crazy. this is a solid performer, solid performer. Like top good. tier of the airbnb listings mm -hmm. okay yeah. that was the context i wanted Definitely. and then i just wanted to before, one yeah. more thing i look at so all these expenses here and you guys can download this i mm -hmm. mean all the cleaning fees management fees repairs yeah uh maintenance so it's basically everything, everything other than probably the mortgage mm -hmm. debt and utilities. utilities. And utilities that the owner has. Insurance. Correct. Okay, yeah. so the owner is getting 51000 and change. Minus. They're paying their mortgage, yeah. paying some utilities. Um, yeah. And, okay. Yeah. And the one thing that this probably wouldn't include, maybe it does sometimes, are significant renovations. If there's a, a roof repair, that's not going to be on here. Yeah, well, that's just, yeah, well, like the standard CapEx stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, cool. All right. You said go back to the slides, Jonathan? Yes, that'd be great. All right. This slide or? Yeah, that's perfect. And then there's, I think, two more bullet points on this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So future projections. So what? Poor, yeah, poor, poor performance is is what that's supposed to say. <laughs> um, so the two data points that we can't really see here and that we don't have data for is uh, interest rates lowering supply. So certainly um, the amount of people buying short term rentals or buying properties in general has has been decreasing. Um, and we're not going to see that. Like, I mean, I think we're seeing that in real time to some degree, but um, I think the the supply is certainly is uh, taking a hit. So hopefully that'll make the uh, the current supply out there um, a little bit better. And poor performers. So just the let's just say the bottom ten or fifteen yeah. percent of the market. I don't think they're going to make it through. Like if a house is poorly designed, poorly managed, it would be more sensible to to operate that as a as a typical rental. And I think we're going to have um, a big market exit. I don't think that's going to happen now going into the summer, uh, more likely uh, in the, during the slower season. So winter or after winter. Because that was one of the things as we were prepping for this, you guys sure think it's about the bottom 10% is really getting hit hard. Yeah. So you're talking like on this other property here, you know, a, a top 20% property took uh, what we said, a 15, 18% hit. Bottom ten percent properties. I'm assuming will be a greater hit because usually the extremes. Like, do you have any type of idea like how how bad that punch is, or you if you don't want to look I, at your crystal ball, I don't blame I, you. I would say just from looking at some of the Arvada properties and maybe some of the Westminster properties, it's probably closer to a forty percent hit. Oh wow, yeah, okay, maybe so more. Really significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just off the top of my head, 
Um, but those are like the worst, worst performers. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that that's how it is. It's like, there's always like, We're you know, in business that. investing, it's like, that's, you know, yeah. if you have, sometimes you can get away with like, you know, you can get away with in current market conditions. Like how you've been the last couple of years, you know, up until interest rates rise, you could list anything and have multiple offers on there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but now the market has changed. So you have yeah. to change that. So, and that's all part of it. All right. Yeah, so, exactly. um, so the, the yeah. deal dive is the next slide here. Right. So we've been talking about a lot of doom and gloom the last 20, 30 minutes, whatever it's been. And that's not the full story. We, Shalom and I, uh, and another investor purchased a property in Adams County in the Regis area re- recently mm. in September 21. And we worked really hard to renovate it well. We furnished it beautifully, we think. Uh, well, the guests think we furnished it beautifully <laughs> based off the reviews. Important. Yeah. And it is still possible to not make a killing right now, but to do re- pretty pretty well. So yeah. we're going to dive in. And the property on the screen, you'll see. Because um, these are just yeah. photos up here. And this That's is, one property. So this is this, what you finished or you remodel and you furnished. Yeah. Correct. We don't have the before photos here. and It's not it super relevant. It's, but it's, just, it was, um, it's a gorgeous it was property. And this yeah. is another property right next door to it, actually. Because it's a place. house. It's a house it's, with an, uh, an ADU. It's, yeah, it's a okay. du- duplex. You can call it's it. a duplex yeah. detached. Um, so one of the, so you want to maybe open the pro forma? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're switching from another spreadsheet again. We will talk these numbers. Um, oops. But if you guys need a copy of this, uh, go to the show notes or just reach out to us. So once I get this squared out. Okay. So. Great. So this property was purchased in, I think it was September of last year, uh, in North Denver in the Regis area. Uh, so like we mentioned before is a duplex detached duplex, um, one unit, uh, they're about uh, between 1100 and 1700 square feet. One was a three, one, the other was a two, two, uh, for the sake of this pro forma, we just put it all, we just added the bedroom together and the bathrooms, um, just to keep things simple. Um, so yeah, five, five bedrooms, total three bathrooms, total, total square feet of 2590. It's almost 2,600 square feet. Um, Let's look at the purchase price for a second. So we bought this place for four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. We put about one hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, into renovations. The furniture slash setup cost was about twenty-five thousand, and about five thousand of closing costs. So our total um, cash outlay is uh, about two hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. And so about one hundred and fifty is renovation and Airbnb setup cost. 120, mm-hmm. 130 for down payment. Yeah. So about, oh, so just over a quarter million dollars all in cost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll note here our interest rate was 5.75 and we put in 25% down. Okay. So added together, the ADR, the average daily rate of these two units is about $382 and the with the occupancy rate of 83%. Uh, that's high, typically it's the uh, occupancy rates are going to be a little bit lower. It's high because they're small units and with small units, it's easy. It's easier to maintain a higher occupancy rate. Okay. So gross annual revenue here is oh, gross annual revenue here is 115,000 moving down. So this s- is here on this annual. So 115 and that's just uh, top of the line, right? Top line. Yeah. Yeah. Is that including cleaning every, expenses yeah. or yep. I'm sorry, cleaning, cleaning income? Yeah. Yep. Cleaning fees from Airbnb? Okay. Exactly. Uh, moving down into the expenses, the top, the two biggest expenses are cleaning fees and property management. So here we have 14% cleaning fees. So $16,000, uh, property management of 22%. That's, that's what we're charging of 25,000, roughly, uh, real estate taxes of about 0.03%, $1,700, uh, utilities per square foot. And this is going to vary. Some of these numbers are going to vary, um, depending on where the property is, the size of the property. Uh, but we have utilities at 10%. Um, at... Is that your general thumb about, about 10% of, of square footage for utilities? Yeah. Huh. And then in, in the mountains, that's it's going to be higher than that. Okay. Way more. Yeah. Uh, so total uh, 3100 for utilities. The consumables per bedroom, which is pretty consistent across the board of $30 per bedroom per month. Uh, so $1,800 annual. Uh, and then maintenance we have at 0.8% uh, for $3,800 um, total. And then insurance, we have $2,600. Okay. So all together, we have expenses totaling $52,000. All right. So 115 uh, top line revenue, about 52000 
expenses other than mortgage. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. you have insurance and, and taxes on here. And we'll touch on that now. Yeah. So net operating income of sixty, almost $64,000 before any debt service. Um, our monthly payment, um, our, our loan payments annually are about 25000 So 63, our net operating income of sixty. Four thousand dollars minus our loan payments of twenty five thousand dollars leaves us with a net cash flow of almost thirty nine thousand dollars. Wow! So, so three thousand bucks a month. Yeah, not on too, average. Yeah, not too bad. And then the metrics. We let's go to the right for a second, and we can see the uh, cash on cash and cap rate. You scroll up a little bit. Yeah. So the cash on. Oops. I think that. Hold on, I just messed that, something yeah, up. There we go. Yeah, cash on cash is fourteen point fourteen percent. Um, not too bad with a cap rate of thirteen point forty percent. So, yeah, a pretty pretty good deal. Um, these aren't very easy to find. I don't think you're going to find one a month, but they're out there. Yeah, I think the, another takeaway from this deal is we also put in a lot of work ourselves to to make this deal make sense. We got it in pr like horrible shape, and we had to make it pretty awesome for it to make these kind of. To, Make these kind of numbers yeah. make sense so well you guys don't sell yeah. my adu like 13 blocks north of your house right yeah. don't you uh want another one up there <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> but I, it's I a little can't... farther from regis but yeah I, I, mean, I just i don't have the patience for airbnb we i yeah. don't mix well with that yeah that's, that's fair it's a lot yeah. of work it's a lot that's, of work yeah a lot of humans a lot of people involved yes that's, right. Right. that's why we have a management company <laughs> i know yeah. that's uh and, no i think it's amazing i love these numbers like it's just oh just you don't see these numbers, these cash flow anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, these, yeah, these are these are pretty good. And I th I think finding a place that needed so much work, like one of the units of the duplex, was pretty much you know down to the studs, and we had to come in there and put in bathrooms, floor, pretty much everything. Full electrical. Oh, okay. we cool. totally did. We did the electrical, plumbing. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's Seriously. where you're going to find deals. Is where you know if you're going to put in, if you can yeah. put in some work. Yeah. An important thing to note also, we'll, we'll touch on this later, is that we really tried to find furnishings that matched like that mid-mod, bohemian, boho yeah. style. We had someone, we paid someone, uh, Shelby, shout out to her, who she went around and bought things secondhand and bought like really beautiful teak bed frames and cool oh, wow. lamps and artwork. And this is not Ikea. This is not Amazon furniture. And the guests know, and they they that's why they're booking it. That's why there's great reviews. So, and they know that all, through the Airbnb listing? We definitely describe it when they get there. They're also pleasantly surprised as well. Just like, well, this is a real leather sofa. This is really nice. You know, okay. all the, all the uh, reviews speak yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like, you know, setting up properties like this, like what, um, you know, I, I always get questions like this on client, like, hey, they want to do something like this. Like, you know, obviously you guys are an investor. You also run the property management company. What type of services as a PM would you be able to help with a client? I mean, are you going to manage remodel? Do you help with furnishing setup? Like kind of, someone says, hey, I want to do this. Where can they expect to lean on you guys for your expertise? So we typically don't like to do renovations on the front end. Yeah. Anything from helping that's not find. That's surprising. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a little. You, you almost much. couldn't pay us enough, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. yeah. Not, not totally, but almost. All right. Well, Give we got some equity, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. maybe <laughs> we do that's... help our current clients with renovations sometimes. But, yeah. We um, have to, too. If, if something goes wrong, if there's a flood in the house, uh, we're going to help them find. Oh, yeah. Well, that's people, different than saying, hey, we're, we're buying this distressed yeah. property. We got to do full remodel. Hey, yeah. take care of it for me and find a GC and do it all. Like, right. So, yeah, from helping find the property to helping set it up, we want to be a consultant there to help lead you through to make the right decisions because we've seen way too many examples of people buying nice homes and then going and just and setting it up with the crappiest furniture. Going to and Goodwill. It, and yeah, going to Goodwill. And like, you really just spend spend five ten thousand dollars $10,000 more and you will make $15,000 more every year. But some people just want the cheapest option. Yeah. They'll um, pay for a, a million dollar home in cash and then go for, <laughs> for Goodwill and get the furniture there. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting some of the uh, yeah. how real estate industry yeah. lines work, right? I mean, yeah, it's I'm fun. guilty of that charge. Yeah. I get my things again. I'm, I'm very cheap on this. And people are like, right. why? I, I could be because. too. Because. Yeah. Um, I could be too. Yeah. In terms of um, the uh, doing renovations like this, one of the things that I always tell clients to do is that, hey, if you want to, you know, Get, do this as a long-term rental. That's you know that's a lot of the properties we do, and you know, a lot of clients are they're in that bread and butter phase. But like even looking at a short-term rental, like 
they should be talking to you guys and helping to have you like figure out what needs to happen before you close on the property. Yes. Ideally, like this is a lesson I've learned. I've, I always try to part of my clients is like the sooner you loop in your property manager, whether it's a long term or an Airbnb property manager, the better because they have thousands or 10,000 hours of experience now and help give you a high level. Then once you're in a contract, really have the property manager come over in that like early due diligence phase uh, where you can still terminate for inspection items. Have them come like walk to prep. I'm going to do a real underwriting to make sure that like whatever you think uh, actually matches up with their reality and their expertise. 100%. Um, yeah. We can't we, stress we, this we, enough. <laughs> yeah. We've done that multiple times, many times. So. Yeah. Right. So yeah. anyone out there, please, please, again, whether you work with them or anyone, that's just a huge, huge rule I've learned over the years is like, talk to your property manager sooner rather than later. Yeah. Get <laughs> Assumptions right from cost the you money. Yeah. Exactly. Um, back to the slides. Yep. Or, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. For, okay. So that was just what we just did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go? Yeah. We can jump into that presentation right there. Um, so we were uh, just thinking about this as if, if I was a person jumping into a short-term rental deal, how, what would I want to know? And one of the things I, I wish I was told maybe is view each property or the, your first property as its own little business. And um, I'll go through a PNL in a moment. Uh, and I'm going to use an example that I purchased with my brother uh, in September, 2021. And you can see on the screen, if Chris, maybe you could slide over and show the pictures. This is a house in, in Adams County and it's North Denver. And you can see we put some effort into making the backyard pretty cool. We put a fire pit in there. Um, furnishings are nice. Uh, the guests love it. We have a game area. We have, a, you can see the kitchen's beautiful, yeah. uh, renovated. And um, yeah, so firstly, the first thing I'm just saying here is, you know, the key is to make the house pop, make it look awesome that people actually want to book it. And if you could slide over to the spreadsheet side. Yeah. So this house was purchased in September 21 uh, for $494,000. And we put in about $50,000 in renovations and furniture, mostly furniture. The house was pretty much turnkey, luckily. Um, and for 2022, last year, this is from January 1st to December 31st, 22, the house top lined, top line revenue, 116,000 and 15,000 of that is we're cleaning fees. So $100,000 in rental income just from the nightly rate, the ADRs we mentioned before. And when I say view, view this as a business, you know, you'll see in our expense column here, we're tracking cleaning, the consumables and supplies, deep yep. cleans, deep cleans, meaning clean separate from the actual regular not just the routine stuff, not but... just the turnovers. Correct. And um, we're tracking snow removal, lawn care, management fees, uh, the mortgage payment, separating out taxes and insurance. And um, and you'll notice we actually had some pretty serious uh, maintenance expenses over that year, but there was some major hiding of plumbing issues uh, from the previous person we bought it from. Uh, the dishwasher broke immediately. The washing machine broke. HVAC had a $2,000 Did thing. it break or did it break in flood? Um, it actually just no, no flood. Oh, no great, flood. great, no great, flood. great. There were other floods. <laughs> other, we had many other floods, other properties. But again, we're tracking the trash service, $800 a year, the energy usage, gas and electric, internet, water. And the reason why I'm going through um, all these line items is because let's just use an example of internet. I had a property that its internet expense was $500 for two years. And then the next year it was 800, then 1,000. And we're like, wait a minute. So glad we're tracking this very uh, meticulously because we can then call Xfinity and say, hey, we're switching over to a new company. Company, if you don't you know, lower our rate, they lowered the rate back. So to be very um, detailed in, in yeah. tracking expenses helps you manage, make, you can cut down your operational expenses by a couple thousand dollars a year just because you're tracking it like a business. Um, and to speak more on the story of you actually can make money in the slower economy. After all these expenses of $80,000 expenses, we still had a net income of 3,600 bucks, which is $3,800 a month. 36,000. Um, 36,000. A year, yeah. not 30, I, yeah, you said 36,000, oh, no, 36,000 a year. For the year, yeah. 3,800 per month. And even if we have a 50% drop, a really worst case scenario, we would still be making, you know, $1,700 a month on this property, which is excellent. We couldn't make that as a long-term rental. There's no way. So yes, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but if you have a really cool property and you 
market it well, you take great photographs, you could actually still do well in this down down market. Yeah. No, this is great because I mean, this is I mean, what you five hundred thousand dollars purchase price, mm -hmm. um, and this was like I mean, not the most amazing deal or and not the most amazing rehab, right? Like this is it's pretty. It was pretty good. Yeah. I, I will say what was the best part about this deal was the interest rate, and we got this at the at like the lowest yeah. point. So to buy this now would be tough, but if you have a property, you know, in your portfolio. Well, even if you buy yeah, it now, well, you got thirty six thousand dollars worth of cash flow. That's going to yeah. help offset a lot of the higher interest rate. Well, do you make as so much cash flow today? No, but mm -hmm. you should still be cash flow positive while you're still yeah. owning half a million asset that's appreciating and give you some tax benefits. Sure. And your Airbnb guests are paying down your principal. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. Like this is what I just. I mean, again, I don't do Airbnb personally as an investor, um, but I just love it. It's just like the cash flow. Like, geez, like it just. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And we do, uh, we'll talk more about amenities later in the presentation, but oh, okay. uh, yeah, that, that does matter with this example. All right. So, Great. so let me go through the industry trends, uh, what you need to be looking out for, just some things that we're seeing in the industry, uh, cleaning fees, uh, Cleaning fees, uh, most people have probably seen this, uh, but cleaning, people are upset with high cleaning fees. Um, you're going to see that a lot coming coming up in social media where people are posting about um, high cleaning guests, especially high cleaning fees that they experience that they're upset about. Um, oftentimes, the- Then I have to take out the trash. I yeah, have to take start, a, yeah. I have to strip the bed mm -hmm. and start the wash Ex machine mm -hmm. while I'm paying $200 cleaning fee. Exactly. Yeah. So people are upset about that. <laughs> I meant that one. <laughs> <laughs> Clean the gutters. <laughs> Um, so my recommendation would be, you still want a cleaning fee, but look at what your comps are charging and, you know, have it in, in a, a reasonable range. Direct bookings. Uh, so this is something that we're, that's more common with professional management companies. If you have one or two properties, it's not going to be worth it. Cause you do have to set up a, a, a system for that. You need a, a channel manager and like a property software, uh, property management software. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of bookings go off of the typical OTAs, which is the online travel agencies, such as Airbnb and Verbo and book directly with the hosts. Uh, you're talking about like through their website, through their through website, a different portal. Yeah. And we try to capture a lot of return guests. We say, we give them information and say, Hey, next time you want to book, book with us direct. And there's about a 15% uh, revenue markup that they, that these guys are charging that we can take. Mm. We, and we spread that across um, us, the owner and the guests will pay less as well. So everyone saves, saves, yep. wins a little Works. bit, right? Everyone mm -hmm. wins. Yep. Uh, longer stays. So this has been a trend that we've seen since. So since sorry, COVID. back up on that. Sounds sure. like your strategy is your, your, your main people coming through Airbnb and Verbo mm -hmm. and then kind of like on the repeat and referral. You're hoping to get more direct bookings through, hey, here's the email or hey, here's, you know, hey, thanks for booking. Here's next time. You exactly. Book yeah. directly through us. So you're OK. And are you seeing more people as a repeat referral? Like, are you seeing an uptick or is it, just, or is it too hard to track? Very slowly. I yeah. mean, we were only we only started focusing on this in, over the last few months. We even, oh, OK. So we don't have. Yeah. OK. Um, and the other really interesting marketing uh, strategy that we've employed is using a software called StayFi. And a SafeI is an access point that you plug into your router. And when a guest tries to uh, check in, uh, log in to the Wi-Fi, there's no password, but they do have to go through this portal and the portal will uh, will ask for their information. I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen this in, in hotels or airports. Like where you capture their personal details. Exactly. And add yep. your email and, list then and or this, whatever. Yeah. And this way we get emails from everyone in the house, most likely. Um, oh. And then we can market to people. And I mean, they have the option to opt out, um, yeah. but this is a way to get. To oh, that's get, uh, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we set this up in our in twenty of the most occupied homes that we have. Oh, that's a I love that idea. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty neat. Um, yeah, longer stays. Uh, so we're seeing trend in thirty plus day stays. So that's oftentimes the nurses, uh, some corporate leases, and that's just becoming more common. Um, Airbnb has even halved the amount of commission that they charge from about fifteen percent to eight percent to help encourage uh, both hosts and guests to book longer stays. Um, and lastly, we have unique stays, which are unique properties uh, like a yurt or a tree house. If someone wants to go build a tree house, they will probably do pretty well. Um, do you guys have any like unique stays in your portfolio? Not um, an Airstream. We have an Airstream, which is kind of cool. An Airstream parked in someone's driveway. Yep. <laughs> it's, okay, it's in the backyard of another property. Yeah. 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 
um but nothing so wild how is it um, how does that just how's that perform generally it's we've only had it for a year yeah it's also um not it hasn't been operating through the winter okay yeah. We can get back to you on it. It's not, we don't have so much data on it yet. Oh, that's good. That's one of those things like you see out there. Yeah. And air, air streamers are often, uh, you know, they're they're popular out there on Pinterest and social media. I think yeah. the, part of the issue is that the Airstream is not in a really cool place. Exactly. It's in like North Denver somewhere. Yeah. So it's like if you put that on a mountainside or somewhere really cool. I not think my back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. You, unique stake really goes hand in hand with the location. Like you don't have, you, unique stays are typically in cool places. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We um, have a, a house in Bailey that has a really, awesome putting green on the property with a beautiful view in the background so that's kind of it's unique that i haven't seen many properties oh, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. so yeah pretty cool. and that, yeah this is applicable to unique amenities too like yeah. if you have interesting amenities i think it's going to help improve bookings um and then here's just a little graph for those of you who can see it just to see um the post-pandemic demand growth strongest among unique states so you can see that unique is states that, that top dark line yep yes yeah. so, so they've the, had the most growth yeah and exactly. then demand growth Demand growth, mm -hmm. and, and the, then what? The house and villas the, and apartments and condos are about the second most. They're about the same. Yeah, and, and the a villa bedroom. is just it's still a house, right? Essentially, okay, yeah. And then the B and B, the the bed and breakfast have like are more the traditional lowest. bed and breakfast. I think that's what it. I think that's what it means. Wow, like, what does it actually mean? Yeah, I mean, so they actually see negative growth then on mm -hmm. the bed and breakfast side. Yep, mm -hmm. I mean from, wow, okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, and that's that's post pandemic. So I mean, I, I would assume that they got hit pretty hard in the during during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. Okay. So, so moving on yeah, moving to the on next one, the, the last one. Yeah. We've got tips, tricks, and best practices. Yeah. So um so recently I purchased a house in Centennial and it's a nineteen sixty four multi level house. Uh the bones of the home are good though. So and it, but it's not so it's not the coolest house. But the bones are good, and I personally think it could be made into a pretty awesome short-term rental. And we're in the the last part of this presentation, which is how can you, how can you? I mean, it's kind of in line with what we've already been saying. But how can you make your short-term rental succeed pretty well in this market? And one, if the bones of your home are good, you know, good structure, no foundation problems, good plumbing, um, can it be can it be renovated to to be made really awesome? Um, Sean, can you get the next one? Thank you. And once you do renovate it, are you professionally renovating it? Are you going to photograph it professionally? How, when, if you're someone on Airbnb or Verbo and you see a hundred listings, how do you grab those, that person's attention and s make them say, not only is that house more expensive, but I want to stay there mm -hmm. and get in that top 10%. So obviously really putting the effort into making the place unique, beautiful, um, really is is very helpful um and again with this this idea of running your short-term rental as a business every business you know if you call up your a restaurant nearby your house and they're not answering like you're not going to really want to go to the, you want to get your chinese food they don't answer like well i'm going to go to a different chinese restaurant yeah. same thing you're, if your guests are trying to reach out to you and you're not getting back to them all the questions that they have how do i get there what's the wi-fi how do I use the washing machine? If these questions are not answered, it's gonna annoy people. Your ratings will go down. The optimization of your listing on Airbnb and Verbo will go down. So it's really a matter of keeping up with your guests, with your customers. Um, at Air Simplicity, we do biannual seasonal maintenance. This is super important if you're running a short-term rental. Get in the house. Are there scuffs all over the walls? Is the furniture loose? Um, did, are some of the light bulbs burned out? These are questions and things that need to be addressed when you're managing a short-term rental. And, um, you know, just regard to seasonal maintenance, and this is, it's so important. Like, are there weeds all around the house? Like just the things that are very easy to, to miss uh, really require that hands-on attention. And um, yeah. Yeah, the sophisticated pricing and setting strategies, this is really important. And I mean, we've seen uh, differences in revenues for from properties that don't have it to properties that do of, of anywhere from 15 to 30 percent uh, there are a couple of softwares out there the big ones are wheelhouse beyond pricing and price labs we use price labs mm -hmm. um, we don't have enough time to get into the details of how this works uh, but essentially they're tracking supply and demand of short-term rentals in in specific areas and will adjust multiple times a day um, to make to really optimize price 
Um, some things to something that has that is worth considering. Oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> um, Airbnb, according to Airbnb, we're seeing that listings that have a weekly discount are seeing uh, a revenue increase of about 6% a year. Those that have monthly discounts are seeing revenue increase of about 5% a year. And pet friendly units, we're seeing, this is according to Airbnb, um, they're seeing uh, bookings increase by 6% a year. According to Verbo, it's actually a lot higher, oh, about wow. 18%. Um, and we we actually sent out an email a couple months ago to all our owners say, hey, like the numbers are here. We should. And it's it's more difficult um, to operate uh, with pets, but it's it's certainly more profitable. Yeah. What percentage of you guys' portfolio allows pets? Right now, it's probably about a quarter. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Quarter, 30, 40 percent, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what best, about your personal properties? All of my personal properties Same. allow pets. They allow? Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's there's I mean, one, you expose your listing to many more mm -hmm. to higher percentage of people and then pet fees, too. We charge about 75 to 125 for pet fees. OK, so there's additional revenue there. And some of that pet fee revenue also gets paid to the cleaners because their job is harder and they might have to pick up, you know, dog poo or dog whatever. Dog poo, yeah. your dog here to vacuum up. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing are best amenities. And this is a question that comes up frequently or, hey, what how do what are, what are the best amenities? What should I buy for my short term rental? Uh, a hot tub is number one by far, especially in Colorado. You want a hot tub. You can set up a hot tub for I mean, I just did in one of my units. I bought a pretty decent hot tub and I set it up for probably six thousand dollars all in. And I will see that return within certainly before the end of the year. Um, fire pits are very popular. Outdoor spaces are are uh, yeah. very popular. Yeah. So having furniture, having a barbecue, very fast Wi-Fi, um, especially post COVID where people are working remotely, you need to have fast Wi-Fi. People are uh, expecting that. And yeah, shout out to Starlink. Uh, we have Starlink on all our mountain property, almost all our mountain properties. Are they, they legit? Oh yes. yeah, they're. I pay oh, less God. than I do. Um, no, I, really. I pay less than my speed is five times faster. Than what you pay for, then, like, then, like HughesNet or, or, or Viasat and or, yeah. or the other These, satellite. Yeah, I've used satellite in the past, not just like ten years ago. It was horrendous. So it was bad. like dial up modem still is from horrendous. my high school days. Yeah, it still is bad. But and Starlink is okay. Real, wow. no, really good. No, re, like yeah. actually very good. It's like one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and twenty bucks a month for wow. I think a terabyte of data or something yeah, like that. Some it's really amazing. Yeah, wow, it's a game changer. Yeah, um, so you need to, that. Yeah. Just to add, um, I was saying before with the the house I showed before with the the one I bought with my brother has that fire pit in the backyard. Yeah, I've looked at the reviews. I'd say about a quarter of the reviews talk about how much people love that fire pit, and it has a gas line going to it. So there wasn't ex it was expensive to get that put in, but people really love it. So a quarter percent of your reviews are referencing the, the fire, fire pit. pit. Wow. That's yeah, a so powerful. Statement right there goes to show you that fire pits, hot tubs, people yeah. are on vacation. They want to be with their families yeah. and friends talking. Yeah. I want the out. fire pit with the hot tub. I want the Christmas lights <laughs> pulling around the tree trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the story here is if you're going to do a short term rental, <clears throat> go all in. Don't half ass it. You got to go. You put in everything. Um, yeah. Beat out your competition. Well, especially and, now. Especially, especially yeah, now. Supplies, Over supply. Yeah. Supply is increasing. Yeah. Like this it's, is where you have to be like your best foot forward. Got to shine. It's the yeah. only way to do it. Yeah. Uh, so a question here from Diana. Um, she says, what are your thoughts on buying short-term rentals in the mountains right now? I know there's a bunch of restrictions, but is there a best place to buy? Summit County, Dillon, Vail, Winter Park. Well, Summit County is a, all, well, it's a smorgasbord. Yeah. Um, well, just going off regulations, Park County has a lot of favor favorable regulations. You also can get a cheaper property out there. Um, that's a good suggestion. I think you know going to Vail, I mean, it's so expensive. It would be really hard. It'll yeah, hard and but Summit counties, there's a there's a moratorium currently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was I actually talking buy. though uh, a, a mountain broker who for your council, Amy Nakos, and she she's been there for like twenty years, and she was like, yeah, there are like different zones. She's like, yeah, one zone's like a eighteen year wait list or something. <laughs> like it was just ridiculous. <laughs> sure, there were some opportunities up there, but it's it's complicated. And there's yeah. Yeah, well, they're being sued right now. There's actually like a contingent of people like looking to sue the county. I'm not, no, no, I'm not surprised. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, ski towns, I mean, we're not so familiar with ski towns. We actually tend to stay away from ski towns. It's just a lot, it's very saturated there. Um, but yeah, outside the ski towns, especially 30 to 60 minute drive from ski towns. I think, I think there's some good opportunities there. Fair yeah. Park, Park County, yeah, fair play. 
Uh, I would say stick within two hours from Denver. I mean, I don't even like just managing or setting up a place farther than that could be a challenge. Mm. Um, and so that just depends so much. I mean, like, you know, there's some more variables up there in the mountains with how close you're to the ski lift and this and that. Right. So, but yeah, make sure you really know, like all the stuff they talked about in the, in the first bullet point, it's probably even more complex up there mountains. So go back, listen to that first part and then do your due diligence. And I would really look for like in each of those areas, find an expert in those areas because it's so nuanced. Like, so I've yeah. talked to various mountain brokers and investors up there. It's just the difference between counties is just so much more drastic like denver and adams or denver yeah. and douglas and and on that note on mountain properties mountain properties are so much more complex than city properties and we actually for all our mountain properties we have typically one of us like i i'll stay in the property overnight to learn it and and to understand it because it's very nuanced there's a lot of things that need explaining mm. and we need to include things in the guidebook um yep. so guest yeah, education yeah, I guess it's it's it is more complex. You can't yeah. just leave doors open. A bear could walk into the house. You know, you can't leave trash outside. You got trash. people oh, coming yeah. in from New York Se City. You don't they even don't know. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, septic systems, wells. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's cool. it's tricky, but it could be done. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, oh, oh. sorry. You got the slides now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, we're uh, man, you nailed it on time, you guys. We're like, uh, I think exactly 60 minutes and 49 seconds. So, you guys win that trophy. Uh, <laughs> but this was like a phenomenal webinar and education. So, like, thank you guys. We had lots of great questions in the comments. I appreciate uh, all the people yeah. out there listening and giving comments on here. So, <clears throat> so, as you guys can tell, like, you know, this is why I like having local experts on here. We're on the Denver Real Estate Investing Podcast. Got Denver Metro residents, investors, property managers. They live, they invest, they manage here. They know the, they know the market. They obviously know all the nuances. Um, so I highly recommend you guys reach out to them if you need help with uh, doing a, managing an Airbnb or questions about there, reach out to them. We got the QR code, airsimplicity.co. And I think Shalom, you're more the front end, right? Yeah. So I'll, I deal with all acquisitions. Um, and yeah, feel free to call me. I love, I love this stuff. I love talking about it. So if anyone has any questions, yeah, I'm always happy to chat. Yes. Yeah. And I'm more operationally heavy in the company running the just day to day operations, the teams and a lot of the back end finance and bookkeeping and all that fun stuff. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to our team. We would not be able to manage 70 properties across seven distinct geographic regions without them. And yeah, we're just really appreciative of all their hard work. And um, if you have friends, family coming to Colorado, go to book.airsimplicity.co as in Colorado and you can get a much better deal there. And uh, yeah, awesome. we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys. Again, if you guys have any questions, reach out to them. Reach out to me if you need help with anything. We're always here to provide you a resource. Got a couple of questions here asking if they can get spreadsheets and the video links. Yes, we will send all that out after the recording. And if you're listening to uh, the replay of this, uh, it should be in the show notes. If it's not, email one of us and we'll get you all the information. People out there, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Shalom, Jonathan. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This was another great webinar. Great. Talk to you guys soon. Thank Thanks, you. Chris.